At the end of a nearly seven-year journey, having covered three and a half billion kilometers, there remained one crucial maneuver. Mission controllers in Pasadena were confident as Cassini Huygens approached the planet, but admitted that there would be nail-biting moments. But on July the 1st, the spacecraft sailed through the ring plane, its engine fired for a 96-minute burn, and when communications were re-established, there could be no doubt at all. For the first time in the history of space exploration, a man-made satellite is today orbiting Saturn. For at least the next four years, the United States and Europe now have a science outpost to observe the planet, its rings and icy satellites, and particularly its largest and mysterious moon, Titan. I think we got ourselves a mission. We're uh, in Saturn orbit, we're just where we want it to be, so um, everything's great. Of course, for us Europeans, uh, the Americans have brought us there. Uh, we've still got a lot of work to do ourselves. Even before this Saturn orbit insertion, Cassini had been examining the planet. Its magnetospheric imaging instrument had pictured for the first time the magnetic bubble of charged particles that surround the planet. The emission of hydrogen seen here in red escaping from the magnetosphere comes mainly from regions well outside the rings and perhaps beyond the orbit of Titan. When the spacecraft reached the magnetosphere, its radio and plasma wave instrument registered a series of sonic booms, the shock waves, where the incoming solar wind meets and is deflected by the magnetic bubble, in much the same way that air flows around a supersonic plane. During the approach, Cassini observed the effects of small moons. This view of the F-ring, taken by the spacecraft's narrow-angle imaging camera, has been reprojected to show the ring as a straight line. This process elongates the moon Prometheus seen to the lower left. A faint stream of material called a streamer appears to link the moon to the ring, possibly caused by the moon's bobbing up and down in its orbit and perturbing the ring. On July the 1st, only 20,000 kilometers above Saturn's cloud tops and before recrossing the ring plane, Cassini's science instruments were again probing the environment and imaging the rings, this time at close quarters. It was um, beyond description, really. It was mind-blowing. It was every adjective you could think of. I'm surprised at how surprised I am at the beauty and the clarity of these images. They are shocking to me. I thought that uh, my team here was playing tricks on me and showing me a simulation of the rings and not the rings itself. The rings are made up of ice particles which can reach the size of small rocks. The visual and infrared mapping spectrometer has discovered that the ice crystals or grains on the surface of these big snowballs increases in size further away from the planet. The outer part of the A-ring, viewed from the north, unlit side, showed density waves, or ripples, due to the moons Janus, Pandora and Prometheus. After crossing the ring plane for the second time, Cassini looked up at the F-ring, now illuminated, and its bright core, approximately 50 kilometers wide. A narrow angle image shows wispy, ribbon-like features inside the ring, probably caused by the small moon Prometheus. Unidentified material in the rings, dubbed as dirt, has also been discovered, just after going into orbit. The so-called dirty material is most abundant in the thinnest part of the rings, in the Cassini division and in the Enca and other small gaps. This mystery material appears remarkably similar to the black layer seen on Saturn's moon Phoebe. Cassini has also been targeting the giant moon Titan. Spectra data obtained mid-June clearly show a variety of molecules such as acetylene here, the tall spike, ethane and propane. Organic chemistry which is at work on in the atmosphere of Titan and possibly on the surface resembles the one which was at, Earth, at work before life on Earth. On Titan it has not evolved so by studying the organic chemistry at Titan, we, we will study reaction, the chemistry which was at work on Earth before life, and this is what makes it very, very exciting. A day after Saturn orbit insertion, Cassini was again aiming its sights on Titan, now some 300,000 kilometers away. 
Piercing the layer of smog and shrouding the moon, images from the Cassini visual and infrared mapping spectrometer revealed with great clarity an exotic surface covered with a variety of materials in the southern hemisphere. Color was used here to enhance the various wavelengths. The image on the right, taken at 5 microns, indicates dark icy regions and brighter hydrocarbon rich materials. A bright cloud of methane particles is apparent in all three images near the South Pole. Its persistence over an extensive range of colors indicates that these cloud particles are large compared to the typical haze particles surrounding the planet, suggesting a very dynamic atmosphere near the South Pole. The field of clouds is 450 kilometers across. Features as small as 10 kilometers can be seen. Viewed at a range of 339,000 kilometers on July the 2nd, the South Polar region showed many strange dark and bright patterns on Titan's surface, linear, sinuous and circular, whose origins are not yet understood. Another image at a range of 344,000 kilometers showed details on Titan's surface never seen before. The finest features are less than 10 kilometers across. There are some linear features that could be impact craters, but the fact that many features are linear reinforces the view that other geological processes are shaping the surface. First images arriving at Saturn and the first clear views of Titan were just a taste of things to come. Cassini-Huygens has begun the first of many orbits around the planet, and the orbiter's 12 instruments are today returning a steady stream of information. Titan specialists have already much data to analyze. Their next rendezvous, however, will be on October the 26th, when Cassini will fly past Titan at a distance of less than a thousand kilometers. Huygens mission managers, for their part, will be checking out the descent probe. The first images that have been received have already shown them the area where it will be descending in January next year.